All right. Welcome, everyone. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're having a great time here. We're going to do a fun composition of a female seated figure. This is an idea of basically we're out maybe perhaps on a um, watercolor workshop. We're doing a plein air painting. Everyone's out. We're out in the field. We have our easel set up and we're maybe really at a beautiful like landscape scene and everyone's got their easel set up and we're all painting and you know, it's kind of like that kind of a feel of being outdoors, doing like a really beautiful outdoor painting composition. So um, I just kind of have that thought in mind of maybe I'm sitting here and we're all painting together and maybe I'm painting my landscape scene and also another uh, figure in front of me. So to kind of make things more interesting, figures are fun. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to practice up on the figure paint, uh, the figures, you know, the human form, figure painting. Um, I know many of you had said you wanted to see more, so that's what we're going to do. So basically simple. We're using the Prang Oval 16 set. We only get, we're only going to use two brushes, basically, just the number 10 Escoda travel brush and the number 5 Da Vinci travel brush, synthetic, and a pencil, simple pencil, and that's it. And then some paper. We have some uh, Fabriano paper we're going to use, and that's all we need for this uh, composition, and we'll get started in just a second. All right, so we did see the finished painting. Let's get started with our drawing. I always mention here too, if you can, it's really a good thing if you can just remember with figures, this is just like a general rule. You can kind of apply this whenever you're working with the, uh, the figure, the human form. As you can always say that your human form is usually going to be about 7.5 to 8 head lengths uh, in height if for a standing uh, human figure. So we could always think of it like this. One head length there. And then you would just times that by 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, approximately 8. That would be the um, feet and the top of the head. And then um, usually we say about to the to the seat <clears throat> around the belt line or the bottom of the um, gluteus maximus. It's about four, right around there. And so maybe you might have your thigh, I mean your uh, shins and your thighs here and your knees about there, and then your pelvis about here, and then the rib cage about here, rib cage about there, and then the head. So that's kind of like just the real basic essence of like the human form if you want to kind of see it that way. And it's really helpful if you could put a chart like this, if you could draw out this chart or maybe do something more creative or different, or you could even look up, there's a lot of great stuff online in books and on YouTube that talk about the size of the human form and how you can divide it up into sections and things. But I, I use this method, which is just basically, I always use the, um, the head as my, my first starting point. So whenever I draw a figure, I always start with the head first and then I scale everything from that head. So if I draw that head really large like this, well, then I know I've got to draw the rest of the eight head lengths the same size as we go. So here they're a little smaller so I can fit the whole form of the human figure here uh, within this um, point of like the floor with the feet all the way to the top of the head. So just a good point to kind of reference, you know, for when you're creating figures that really is helpful. So we'll use it too here when we're doing this painting. <coughs> okay. So first off, let us, we're going to do this scene. We're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy it. We'll make our usual, um, we're just going to make our outline here for the borders of our drawing. This way we kind of know what we're working with here. What the area is that we're working with. And this could be the frame of, a, of um, like we're maybe looking to put this painting into a frame or a mat. We're going to mat our painting. So we're, this might be the window of the mat. So we would have that. That's what we're working within. And then we'll say, okay, now we're going to start to develop the where we're going to put our figure. And I would say... We're going to probably put our figure about here, starting at the top of the head. And then maybe the bottom of the figure 
is about here where the chair is. We're going to have a, a seated uh, female figure, seated pose, in a um, like a small um, artist chair. So we'll make we'll pretend this is a female artist painting outdoors, and uh, in the outdoors, and maybe a plein air scene somewhere, and um, on a on a um, perhaps a nice uh, workshop or something, a watercolor workshop or whatever, and. Everyone's got their setups and they're sitting in their lawn chairs working on some plein air paintings outdoors. So that's the kind of idea we're going to have here. So the first thing I do is um, I'm going to take the head and make the head about here. And then maybe um, make a ponytail here maybe. Like that. And... I'm going to uh, make the shoulders about this much here. So, but the first thing I want to do is if my head is this large here, uh, for me to find the bottom of the seat of this figure, I just have to go down four head lengths. So, you know, I can just take this and do a rough estimate and say, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, kind of just do some ovals quickly, or I could just measure it too and just say, how much did I make this head here about approximately? Yeah, about two centimeters there, or... That's about what three quarters of an inch. Yeah, about three. Uh, yeah, three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. So, two centimeters is easier to work with right now for this anyway. So we're going to go two centimeters, four, six, and eight. So eight will be the the bottom of the seat of the figure where they're sitting in the chair. So, um, I'm going to take the. figure and just kind of develop a maybe the pose is a little bit um i would say this figure might be leaning a little bit over here so i'll make the shoulder over here a little bit like that and um put a shirt here maybe and this might be a a vest or something it might be cool out so there's a nice fleece vest our figure has on here like this and then maybe over here we're going to develop some legs and things and feet but for right now we're sticking with the upper body and the head and very simply we just have the first oval is the head and we just went down four more one one two three and four three and four and that's the seat area we're in a seat we're in a nice um camping type seat here Okay, and then that is going to be like so. There's the uh, small cross members for the chair. And so what I'll do is, as I'm doing this, I'm going to do the other foot over here. Like this. And... Uh, foot over here so the leg and the foot is over here and this might even be a little bit more foreshortened so there's not that much visible there and then this one over here is going to kind of be uh, this is what well, we have our arm over here and uh, maybe the other foot, the leg is over here and we'll have some more uh, this here will just kind of sometimes when you're watercolor painting you can kind of keep certain areas looking crisp and um, more identifiable and then other areas you can kind of leave like more abstract looking so i guess what i mean is have you ever noticed like if you know you're looking at things around a room or anywhere and your your vision only picks up a little bit of what you're seeing in front of you only a small so basically you know your your eyesight might only pick up about one foot of actual really crisp detail in front of you when you're looking straight ahead one foot wide um, you know, within, let's say 10 or 25 feet distance, you're only going to see crisp detail in the first one foot width of your eyesight. And then everything on the other sides of that are blurred out. You can actually just look around your room and you can kind of see when you focus in on one thing in your room across from the room, whatever it is, like let's say a TV or a lamp or anything like that, you'll notice you can, you can see that lamp crisp, clear in detail, but you won't see the other things on the sides of it five feet on the other side and five feet the other way or 10 feet, you don't see any real sharp detail on that because our eyes are kind of 
our eyes only have a real limited um, uh, crisp uh, focus in that like one foot section or two foot section and straight in front of us. So that's kind of like um, just a, the way our eyesight works in our brain. But anyway, not to get into too much of that kind of a detail there, but that's, you know, so when you're looking at a painting, it's the same thing. If you're looking at a painting, if you're looking at the figure and you're looking at the head and the shoulders, you're not going to see crisp details around the other parts of the painting because you're just kind of focused in on one area. So if you think of that the same way with your watercolor paintings, you don't always have to have every detail figured out in your painting and, and painted and drawn and painted perfectly or in crisp detail. You can make certain areas more crisp detail and you can leave other areas kind of softer and, and more uh, kind of like abstract if, if you want. That's just a general idea with artwork as far as like I would say my style and you know a lot of watercolor artists you'll notice they do that. They kind of soften out colors and they make things soft looking like with gray colors and they don't make everything really vibrant colors. And then certain areas they'll make really sharp, vibrant colors and exciting colors because they kind of know the human eyesight works that way. Your eyesight is only going to pick up certain things in one area at a time. So you can actually direct the focus of your um, viewer's attention onto your painting if you make certain things in crisp detail and then you leave other things kind of soft looking. So we'll make this left side over here kind of soft looking and uh, not as much detail. And um, we're going to have our chair come over here on an angle this way. So we're going to have one of those there. And then we're going to have another one of these here. Like that. And then this one over here like so. And yeah, I think we are... looking pretty good we're going to have a also besides our foot over here on the left hand side we're going to have like a duffel bag so we're going to have a duffel bag here a nice duffel bag with some handles like that and uh what else are we going to have here let's see i would say the light is coming from uh the f probably the front sort of like we're painting into the light a little bit here little bit from the right and the front and uh, what else can we do here so we have the figure and uh, we'll have the other uh, sleeve over here and we'll have an easel over here like so an easel set up like that right there and then some of the details under the chair that's not going to be too big of a deal i might just erase that bit of a detail there we have the The, most of the details pretty good here now we have our again our duffel bag we have our chair our seated figure our female figure um, painting here we're doing a workshop outdoors and then uh, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have maybe some like a little bit of a distant um, tree line over here we're gonna have some bushes and trees and things over here a little bit of a rock over here maybe Maybe a little bit of a hill over here. Maybe we're gonna have a small. Maybe we're gonna have a small tree here. Maybe this could be like a nice, interesting looking. Pine tree over here. Maybe another couple bushes over there like that. So I'm just doing a couple little interesting bushes over here a little bit. So we have a little bit of a hill over here and some grass, a little bit of some hills here and we have a nice pine tree there. 
And then we just have some other maybe ground, ground areas over here. And then we're going to have a little bit of shadowing over here. So we're going to say the light's coming from the right over this way. So we'll make the shadow a little bit this way. Just a little bit of a shadow this way. Like this. And we'll work in our shadows as we need to. Okay, and then we have, I think everything looking pretty good. All right, so our sketch is done now. And again, we, again, focused right in the beginning. I just like to mention it again. This one's kind of more of a, um, a little bit easier of a composition because we're only really dealing with the forehead lengths, one, two, three, and four to the seated area. So this was a seated female figure again. That's pretty simple. And then we just drew down a little bit of the leg over here on the right hand side. We have a leg over here on the left side too, but that's a little bit kind of more softer hidden in the, we won't make as much detail on this leg. We'll make this detail a little more sharper on this leg here on the right side. And then again, we have a vest and the hair, ponytail. We have an easel here. We're doing a workshop outdoors and there's some landscaping. We're painting some outdoor landscaping things. And that's pretty good. I think we have enough here that we can just have a lot of fun, go in with our paints and start painting this. And uh, we'll kind of key in on light and shadow on this painting, as well as a good color. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll have a fun time as we're just enjoying the process. All right, so we're going to get started here with our painting portion of this uh, lovely scene here. So we're going to start out with the head. Usually I always start out with the uh, head for my paintings when I'm doing figure painting and we're just having a fun time creating some figure work here. Um, no pressure. We're just doing a um, basic uh, composition here. And uh, I just mixed in some brown. And this is the uh, Prang Oval 16 set which is great for just working with compositions. And, you know, um, I mix in a little bit of blue with the brown to kind of give that warm brown color a little bit of coolness to it too for our hair so that's what i'm going to start out with the hair and i'm using a prang or i should say a uh, da vinci um travel brush which is comes with the schminke set actually this is my uh, i have two of these so these two travel brushes are the same they're both da vinci's this one is um synthetic hair which comes with the schminke uh watercolor set and then this one is I purchased separately this is a number four so these are both number fours or this is a number five actually so this is a number five let's use this one so I'll rinse this one off and we'll use the number the um, number five that comes with the schmink a uh, watercolor palette and we'll just start doing some of the hair And since we know the light's coming from somewhat um, the right and sort of in the front, we're kind of painting into the light in this painting. So it's kind of like the light's in front of us, shining towards us. So if we're sitting here actually painting this figure, so let's say we're all out on a painting excursion in a, in a workshop outdoors, and I'm see seated behind this person. Uh, so I'd be looking at this person in front of me painting. And so the light would be coming towards us this way. So... I'd be sort of seeing like a silhouette of this person here in front of me. So I'd be seeing a lot of kind of like darks and lights bouncing around on the outside edges of the, f of the form. So I'm going to go with that kind of an idea. And um, this will be a female. So I'm going to um, maybe we'll get some gold here, some yellow. I'll mix in some yellow with the hair a little bit on this side. Okay. And then we can start to work into the, um, maybe we'll do a, a red. Maybe a red.
red fleece. Uh, a red, and maybe we'll go with some purple. So some red and some purple. Maybe the purple will be this side over here. So like a reddish purple. Vest, kind of like a fleece vest. And then maybe it's a little bit more blue down at the bottom here. So I'll go with a little bit of a darker blue there. So I'll get some of the colors working here, some of the darker. We could always add a little bit of black up here. We could always pick up a little bit of black and use that to darken up some sections here. Gray thing down, you know, gray things down a bit if we want to. And then I'll use a tissue to dry off the brush, take off some water. So this way I have just a damp brush. And I can kind of lighten this up up here. And what I'm thinking is if I just stick with the idea of trying to mix the colors around pretty good, I think it's going to look good if we kind of a lighter kind of a pinkish color here we'll do the shirt maybe over like this Then we'll get some more blue and purple here. So I'm working basically the head right down into the clothes and just keep working with that idea of kind of starting from the top and working my way downward. And then uh, these are the jeans here. So I'm gonna kind of go down there a little bit. And the jeans are over here too. So I'm gonna put some of that there. Maybe we'll make the chair green. Give us a little break with colors here. And we'll do a little green. So you mix your colors, you have fun, add a little brown to your greens. It gives you more of an olivey green, which kind of looks really nice. Sometimes it's always nice to have like um, greens uh, toned down a little bit. Sometimes they can be a little bit overpowering. So I like to do that. Add some brown there, maybe some orange or um, works well too, orange or gold with our greens. So that's the chair. That chair blends right in with the figure's clothing, like that. And here over on this side, I would say we don't really have to do too much. Um, we could take some blue and purple Add a touch of black to it. That's really pretty powerful, so I would maybe a little bit of orange and blue. That might be a little better. And then we'll do the chair. So some of the chair I'm going to make lighter, some of the, the legs of the chair, a little bit lighter, some of the legs of the parts of the chair, I'll make a little darker. And 
There might be a little part of the chair there, and then over here too. Yeah, it's one of those fake it till you make it. Sometimes, you know, you just add in some details here and there, and it all works out good. Then we'll do some bit of um, some shoes here. Then a little more blue for the blue jeans. A little bit of purple and blue. Purple and blue makes good for blue jeans. And we got the knee there a little bit. And then we have, we're going to, maybe we'll do a blue. Maybe we'll do a blue and green. Duffel bag here, so that's going to be there. And then we're going to go right in and get some orange, maybe some pur uh, purple and orange for some shadow colors, like that, a little bit of purple, a little more purple in there. And we will add some more shadowing colors too as we go. So, already we can see where we've come a long way. We've got, really, we started again. Not a big deal. We, we started with our hair right at the top of the figure after we got everything sketched in nicely. Then we went in right with the shoulders in the clothing, a vest with um, some blouse here. And then we have the chair and the legs. And then we did a duffel bag over here. And then uh, we're pretty much, we'll take a break in just a second. I'm just going to do maybe the, do the handle there on the duffel bag. And you can add some more details here to the duffel bag maybe. And a little more shadowing under the chair. And I'll tie that all right in across. And I'll leave some light there too. So leave some lights in your shadows. So I would say if you're making shadows under the chair here where our feet, uh, seated figure is, uh, definitely try to leave some light, bits of light under there too, white paper. That kind of gives you the feeling like there's, you know, light coming through and it's kind of hitting and missing different areas and kind of like reality, really. A lot of times you'll see that when you see shadows and light. It doesn't always have one large shadow. The light a lot of times creates paths of light going through things as well as shadows. So um, I think we're going to maybe just... Start tying in a little bit of the background here. So we have some some interesting uh, grass and a couple splashes for some rocks. And 
And then what I'll do is probably now we've done most of our detail work with this smaller number five Da Vinci uh, travel brush, which is actually a uh, synthetic brush, which is great if you're especially if you're just beginning watercolors or you've only been painting for like a year. Um, if you use synthetic brushes, you'll notice that it, it, they hold less water, which means you're going to have a little more control over how much water is uh, on your painting and your paper as you go. That sometimes can be a challenge. That was for me when I first started. Um, I always found that I was either adding way too much water or way too much paint. I couldn't find like that happy medium of what I needed to have for my uh, my painting. So that's why I always mention that. Um, if you use synthetic brushes, it really can be a help because you kind of you won't over you won't be adding too much water to your paints and your paper and your washes. Like I think for the most part, it'll help you that way. Okay, well, we have Okay, we've kind of got our details in for our figure and the painting apparatus. We have our easel here, a duffel bag, our figure's enjoying a nice plein air painting session. And uh, we're going to we're gonna actually get a larger brush now because once we start getting into more of these larger areas of the painting, we want, we're going to want to cover more area quickly. So that's why I say let's step up and use a larger brush. So I'll step up to a number uh, 10, which is doubling the size, although sizes don't always mean um, a definite, you know, some some manufacturers might call their brush a number 10 and it's this size, and then other, you know, manufacturers might call their brush, uh, you know, a 10 as well, and it might look like this. The hairs on the brush might be a number 10 like this, and then this is a number 10. So you have to really just use what you feel is right. So this is, looks pretty good. This is like kind of fits the the rest of the painting, or even larger than a 10 maybe. But this isn't a Skoda travel brush, so I think this will be fine. So we'll come back in a few minutes, and we'll sort of finish up the rest of the painting. I think we'll put in a couple more interesting details, and then we'll kind of... Um, finish up but I, I think this is a really fun uh, figure painting to do and I'm glad you're joining along and I always mention too if you haven't if this is your first time here please uh, subscribe on the right hand side below you know if this is your very first time here you're at the right place at the right time we do everything watercolors so this is just one thing we do figure painting but we do everything else all your classic watercolor paintings we do we do flowers and landscapes and trees and street scenes and cars and figures and portraits and we do everything watercolor so we're just practicing up this particular episode um, with some figure painting. But I know you'll enjoy all the other videos we have. So if you subscribe, you'll just be connected to us and you'll kind of see the new videos coming out as we go each week. If you're subscribed, that's all. It just keeps you in contact with us. And there's no obligations or anything like that. You won't get any emails or calls or text messages, any of that nonsense that goes on these days with all the bothersome calls and emails and things that we get on our phones and devices and things. So no worries about that. YouTube is just... Uh, if you like my channel, YouTube just will let you know I've made a new video, and that's all it is. Nothing more than that. Okay, so right, we'll, get, we'll get right back uh, in a second or two. All right, so we're getting uh, started again, and uh, we're going to come back in here. And I notice right away what I kind of can see is that we could use some more darks in here. On the duffel back here, I can kind of see we should use some more darks in there. Um, and then we can just kind of flow some of that darker wash, I think, out into the especially into the cast shadow, maybe somewhere out in here it's a little lighter, the shadow. 
but especially under there, that looks better. I think. So if you see a couple spots that need a little bit more, if you need some more darks, some more darker tonal values, um, please add them in as you go. But I think that's pretty good right now. Those are the first two that really kind of, I thought looked. Some of the shadow too, maybe like that. That looks good. And then again, we'll bump up to our next size brush here. And I think, um, let's do some, let's create some of those. Again, we got some, we have some green and some orange to kind of warm up that green a little bit, make that like an olive green, maybe some brown in there. So we'll kind of mix up some browns and greens. And maybe we'll just start over here. And let's not make a big deal of this. I think let's just kind of finish out our painting. We kind of see <clears throat> if you want to make them, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to have more details in your painting for this part of the painting, feel free to do it. If you like to see more, <clears throat> if you want to spend a little more time on the details here, um, I'll do some splashing. So what I like to do is the focus of this painting was the figure, and um, that's why I'm not going to uh, spend a ton of time doing some of these background, or this, you know, kind of the distant part of the painting here now. It's important too, but again, we're, again, we're working on our figure paintings, and you could do as much as or as little as you want, and have fun with it, and... You can do this painting numerous times and maybe one time you'll just paint the figure with very little details in the for, uh, in the uh, distance here. Or maybe you might find that you want to do a lot of details. Maybe you're going to put some purple mountains in the background and get a little more detailed. We have tons of videos on landscape paintings. If you type in Chris Petrie landscape paintings, you'll notice I have lots of videos that will show you how to create all those mountains and trees that you might want to put into this if you want to get more details on that but for this I think it's pretty good the closer we get um, the closer we get to the foreground here the more lively I would make the colors like this here so in the distance I would make the colors a little more cooler I can't say I went that I made those that much cooler actually um, we can do that though we can take some blue and automatically take that blue and start to infuse it into the washes that we just created and that right away will give us that feeling of distance cooler cooler type of wash that might be too Maybe purple would have been, purple would work good too. I would add some purple in there. That green is a little bit overpowering actually. So if I add some purple to it, it kind of looks, it makes it look a little better. And it does. <clears throat> so we can kind of see, you can have fun here, get your colors all looking good for your distant colors there so that you're not looking like it's you know your distant colors are usually going to be cooler so I have the purple and the blue with the green and the brown but overall kind of cooler you can add some more maybe some trees that are coming down in the distance over here like that that are in the far distance that are more cooler like that gives you more of a feeling of uh, three-dimensional quality to your painting your composition here and we're going to do this interesting pine tree here too as well 
And uh, I think other than that, maybe we'll add. And then you can always, when you're working with your palette, please don't let your palette get out of control with too many colors, too many messy looking washes, you know? When you start to feel like you've got nowhere to mix colors, stop a second, take your paper towel, and just wipe up a few spots here and there. Maybe take like three spots that you're going to need, and you just clean three more spots out. And then you have more sections to mix your co colors. You don't want to keep mixing over and over in, in the same colors over and over again, all different mixtures of colors that will wind up looking quite unpleasant. So remember, that's always good. Empty your water. I will empty my water now. So I always like to empty my water bucket two, three times every time I'm painting. At least I change my water bucket at least two, two or three times during a painting, especially if you're going to do like sky washes. I would always change... Or if you're doing some really light washes, like let's do that right now. So right now to get this really beautiful kind of warm pinkish color, pink and orange, for the ground here. See how we got that nice <clears throat> pinkish orange color here? We, we couldn't do that if we had a muddy bucket of water. If our, if our water container was all full of muddy, murky water, we couldn't do this right now. But right now, since we have that, Fresh, clean water we just put in our water bucket. Wow, look at how good that looks. That looks great. And then we can come in here and mix up a little more purple and maybe a little bit of brown. Orange, maybe. Purple and orange. <clears throat> and then we take a little bit of water with that. And then we can kind of just do a little bit of kind of that feeling of the light, uh, the shadows going across like this. You could take your brush and kind of splash going this way. That always looks good. That kind of looks like there's some mysterious shadows going on. That always looks good. And I think our foreground, though, is looking good here. And uh, our figure looks fine. And I think maybe we'll just finish up with um, a smaller brush again. Let's go back to our Da Vinci number 5. <clears throat> and we'll do our pine tree here. And I think once we do our pine tree, we're going to be fine. So pine tree, we're going to have a touch of black up here just because... Uh, this this paint does lighten up quite a bit when you put washes on the praying paints get quite a bit lighter more than when you use uh, tube paints so if any of you are using tube paints and this set too you're using both sets you know like the Schmincke two, uh, tube paints the Schmincke palette with your Winsor Newton and your Holbein paints as well as your um, you're using your Prang Oval 16 paints too as well. Sometimes you might be using that to practice with and do some compositions like this if you are using the Prang Oval 16 set, you will notice it does lighten up more than the, um, when it dries, than the oil, uh, this, this, you know, the tube paints that we use normally, the Winsor Newton and Holbein. So if you're using tube paints, you're going to have less uh, fading and lightening of your paints. So when we're done with our Prang Oval 16 paintings, they're going to look lighter. They're going to kind of like look softer and lighter looking, which you might like that look. I like that look myself. It does look pr pretty nice. Um, you might just have to go back in and add some darks to your paintings here and there, uh, if, if you think you might need to, I, sometimes you might need to do that. But when you're using your, like, Schmincke palette that we use on a normal basis on my channel, those are the two paints, and those are actually, when you put them onto your paper, they stay pretty much, they do lighten. Obviously, watercolor always lightens quite a bit, maybe 40 to 50%, uh, it lightens, you know, almost half of what it would look like when you're painting it. So if you paint something, it usually lightens up about 40 to 50% more once it dries. With the Prang Oval 16, it's a little more than that. So that's why I say you'll see me adding in some <clears throat> darker colors when I'm painting sometimes. But no worries with that. Let's get um, finished up here with our pine tree. So I'm going to use some brown some black, some green. So we're gonna make like that nice evergreen green, sap green, you know, that really dark, really nice looking green. Maybe that, like again, that black, some of that black in there, some blue, some purple maybe even too. Some blue, definitely some blues and greens there. That looks really good if you add some of this viridian type color into that that looks pretty good and then i rinse off my brush and uh 
get a little more brown here and then I think I'll do the we'll do, I'll do some of the, the trunk here of the tree starting out and I won't really do every so I'll skip a few spots there you can kind of see and then I'll go in and get some of that green and what I do is I think with pine trees I would get the brush with some paint on it and then I would dry off some of the paint off the brush like this and then go in and, and start doing some branches and the branches usually on pine trees are you know some kind of angle upwards like this some angle a little bit downwards like that but they kind of are level somewhat level like this and they have that little bit of that smiley face up upward like that yeah that's pretty good then what we do is uh we don't want to do too many i would say kind of we kind of leave them a little a little bit less is better maybe and we can always add a few if we want to but we kind of s step back then we add a few branches and now we step back and go ah that looks pretty good yes then we can say all right let's add a little bit let's take some of this green put it over here add a little more water to it make it a little more a little more water to that and then maybe just add a couple bits of wash to it to kind of make it look like the tree's got a little more fullness to it up top not so much but in the bottom portion that looks pretty good a couple of dabs maybe like that We can even make another tree next to it, over here, behind it. We can even make a group of three. So let's try that. Let's kind of develop this out. Now we did the first one. Now we kind of can fill out a few more. We can go a little faster. The ones in the back here are a little lighter. So the ones in the front are, are darker. So the one in the front is darker. And we could even do a few and then make them really, really thin back here like this. And you can even go really small like that. Just a little indication like this works. And as you get closer, then they're a little more detailed. And then we use a little bit of that more uh, more water to kind of get that same kind of idea where we fill in a little bit more of the and then we can just develop it more and just say okay We've got some pine trees there. Let's make a few more over here that are kind of hiding behind over here. You can barely see them over here, but there's more. And that kind of makes it look more interesting. And then maybe even a couple over here. So we could just take some more of that idea and just kind of expand upon it. So we say, okay, we want a couple more pine trees over this way too. And I think that's good enough. I think just a few here and there over on this side, like this. It gives us that really cool feeling of like there's a clearing or something going over here, like through. Maybe there's a river going through there or something, or a stream, or there's like just some kind of clearing beyond. So. It kind of feels like you can see right through the whole scene and you can kind of go into the far distance. And again, we'll just go a little bit the extra mile here. Let's do a little bit of a purple mountain. Okay, that purple color like this. 
And let's do a little bit of uh, some purple mountains here. And just like this. And then what you can always do is to give it even some extra, you can just add a little like that. A little bit of the darker wash along the bottom of the purple mountain area. And that gives you another feeling of like there's some trees before you see the purple mountain. So now you have added numerous layers of like distance to the painting. So you can imagine this might be some snow. And then you have like the trees here in the middle distance. And then as you go back further, you're seeing the snowy field over here. And then in the far distance, you're seeing that purple mountain. So you can create a ton of three-dimensional quality into your compositions like this. And this is just fun to practice. If you're just doing this as a practice uh, composition, like I often do, um, you're kind of just working ideas into your uh, compositions that you're going to use in future paintings. So, you know, you can always look at someone's painting that you might like to paint. You might be watching another YouTube artist or you might be look, working from a book or from a photograph or whatever it is. And if you're, and you kind of say to yourself, oh, I can be more creative here. I can add some more interesting details to my painting that might look, may, you know, might make it look a little more fascinating looking. So I think this does look more exciting when we're building in that three-dimensional quality of the steps back into the painting. So you have the foreground here. Then you have the middle distance here with the trees and the bushes, the pine trees. And then you have the far distance, which is that snowy field, and then the purple mountains. And I think that is kind of like really can take your paintings to the next level where you're going to really build in that beautiful, realistic quality of um, three-dimensional feel. All right, everyone, thanks so much again for coming by again. Uh, happy painting. Enjoy the watercolor journey. It's a fun journey. And um, I always mention again, if you haven't subscribed on the right hand side below, if you just click the subscribe button, you'll stay connected with us here on my channel and we'll continue to work together as we go. And uh, we're always working uh, here every week, creating new paintings in watercolor and we're covering all the basics and fundamentals all the time on my channel so that you kind of just keep going over those fundamentals until eventually it's just part of your uh, nature as a watercolor artist. You're always going to be drawing from those fundamentals that you learn here on my channel. So thank you again for watching. It's great to be with everyone and uh, we'll see you soon.